All right, all the wraps are done. Time to seal them up. We have the hardener and the resin here. And you got these syringes so that you can measure them out in equal parts. I'm gonna put them in this little cup. Mix it with the back end of this brush for two minutes. And then reading the directions here, it really talks about the need to have it on a flat surface. I think it has something to do with not getting bubbles in it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know that um, another thing that you can do to keep the bubbles from forming, and, and I have the alcohol torch for it, I just never got the, the alcohol to, to do it. So I am going to heat it, and I'm going to just use a lighter to, uh, I gotta find that. You heat it, you heat what you apply, and all the, basically the bubbles come out of it. Uh, when you apply heat evenly so all right let's start with uh, mixing equal parts in this little cup we have the resin I'll take a little cap off there stick it in there slurp up what's gonna be what I think my GoPro just woke up. Three. Oh, I'm losing things. We got three CCs or whatever it is. I tell you what, I'm gonna do a fourth, just because I'm not sure how long, how much this is gonna take. I'll tell you what, that looks like I got two in there. So I'll do five. So three and two. And I gotta go grab a paper towel to clean that off. All right. Keep that clean. We need it later. Put the cap on it. All right, so let's do five of the hardener. Yeah, that's a lot. The hardener's a lot looser. Three, two. If I can get it right at two. There. cap it. There's a lot of directions with this. Um, but basically, you mix it. Scrape it down on the sides. I think you're trying to do things to not incorporate a lot of air bubbles. So, you're mixing it thoroughly, but hopefully not to get air bubbles and I think the so this is a, a mason jar lid that I've put um, aluminum foil on so that I have a flat surface and I think that has as much to do with not getting uh, bubbles in the in the wraps as anything so but I guess you got what 45 minutes or so to work with. It's not going to take me that long to do these. So we'll have the, the motor going, and I'll just kind of show you that in the background. I'll go ahead and turn it on. And what that does is it constantly moves it in one direction. I've been mixing this more than two minutes that it asked for. Here's the part that I'm going to read. 
do not do not use directly from the mixing bowl pour the mixed material onto the flat surface that you've provided for this purpose which is this notice that most of the bubbles introduced during the mix mixing are breaking on their own without outside help you now have about 45 to 60 minutes working time with your mixture so I guess I'm supposed to pour this in there and work with that so that's what I'm gonna do so we'll start with this guy and uh, I guess I just do this. Let the drying motor do it for me. So these are, I think, mean, color protection treated threads, so they don't soak in quite on the level that regular thread does. And uh, it's said that you can you can use this stuff and. One coat is good, but it may require two coats with this style of thread. So I must see how that goes. Uh, I'll let it go overnight after I'm done with this. And uh, I'll look at it and see what I think. If it needs another coat, I think I'll do another coat. But this style thread doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't soak it in as as readily as regular thread. I have applied two coats, although I mean I think it's only just going on once, but apparently the heat is supposed to help those bubbles come out. I'm just not seeing the bubbles. I don't know. It's supposed to let it soak in there better, I guess. Yeah, I need to get the alcohol thing. It does let me have a better look at what, you know, what the wrap job I did is. But I will tell you that five cc's was way too much. Like, I didn't need anywhere near that amount. Like, I'm gonna have it extra. So, I go with three next time. If I need to cook up some more or mix up some more later, I'll do that. Alright, uh, I think I'm gonna turn in for the evening, let this go. I, I do understand what the heat does. It, it takes what you've done with the brush and it kind of smooths it out. Like, whatever you have on there, if there's if there's a bump or uh, an imperfection, it just it takes what you've applied and it just smooths it out. So I do think if it if this is what it looks like, uh, I think it would be a fully functional rod. I do think I want to build it up a little bit more though. I think it's it's uh, I can still kind of see the the individual grooves of each thread, and I'd like it to just be totally smooth so it's probably get a second coat in the morning but for now it's looking really good all right it's the next morning this has been spinning all night to keep it an even coat we're gonna take a look at uh, at what's firmed up here all right so you can see it but I'm telling you that what I feel is I can feel these individual threads and I'd like to get it where if I run my fingernail across it I'm not feeling individual threads so I'm gonna add another coat to that I am gonna share a uh, a tip that I got because I did a I did an Instagram reel on what I did last night um, Let's, uh, and, you know, I, I did the reel and someone who is a rod builder said, hey, here's my tip based on what I saw you do in the reel. So this is from JLS Rods LLC. 
And what he says is, had no idea you built rods, Jeff. If you need any ideas or pointers, reach out. One thing I notice is when you apply finish, use that power wrapper and turn the speed up. It will give you cleaner lines. Less is more also when applying finish. Slap it on, make sure it's sort of level, and move on. There's no need to keep moving it around. For a first in a long time, it looks pretty good though. So, you know, I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, give it a little more speed, and it's probably gonna beat up on there a little bit thicker. But yeah, uh, let's put the second coat on. So I will tell you that all of this kind of hardened up in, uh, you know, I got a pile of these these brushes and cups and obviously the tin foils disposable. So I'm gonna take all that off and uh, use my lid again with a fresh sheet of aluminum foil. And just kind of snap that on there, which just gives us that that kind of shallow, flat, um, little surface to put it in. And uh, we'll go ahead and <clears throat> mix up another batch. Again, I'm not gonna go with. Five, I might go with like two. We'll see. So the directions do you say to let it sit for a minute? Look at all those bubbles. So those bubbles need to, to work their way out. Um, you kind of don't want to incorporate that into your wraps. So let it sit for a little bit and then we transfer a little bit to the tin foil. So while the bubbles are settling out, what we're going to do is do it a little adjustment to uh here let's click it over to dry so going this way it's until i wrapped it with the uh the pedal but we kick it over this way and you actually have to move the belt over to to that constant motor as a you know as opposed to i don't know if you can see there's a wheel in the back there that wheel which is related to the pedal anyhow here's the speed and uh the suggestion was to speed it up i don't see how that changed nope maybe the speed's just for the uh one speed for the drying hmm I suppose one way to speed it up is why you have different different pulleys here or different positions kind of like different gears on a bike so I just moved it out a little bit so small wheel there big wheel there should be faster let's see if it is Yeah, I'm not seeing a big difference there. Alright, I actually timed it and counted how many revolutions. They're numbered one, two, three, and four on the chucks, and this is the faster one in this outer position. So that may be helpful. To someone to know that the further this way you go with it um, the faster it's gonna turn so I'll leave it like that per per the tip I got on Instagram last night
All right, went ahead and poured it in my little shallow dish and uh, kind of working it up the side. It's moving pretty quick, so we'll just keep applying it and um, we'll hit all these one more time and I think we'll be be done with it. We'll be able to get this on the water soon. All right, it's uh, it's no longer tacky. I really want to just take it outside, put that Bates Hundo on it, throw a jackhammer on there, and just catch some fish in my front yard. Let's go do that. There it is. Let's go do it. This was always the plan. Started, the plan was hatched in, in ICAST. And visited the Bates booth and saw the hundo. And then visited the Bats and Enterprises booth talked with Mike about the right rain shadow blank for throwing a jackhammer. So there are mistakes on this. There are imperfections. There are tiny failures. Places where the wrap isn't completely right. Places where I smudged the epoxy and didn't quite catch it before I could clean it up. And I get to fish with this, have this rod in my hands, looking at all those imperfections. Looking at, you know, things I did wrong. But if you don't believe that failure is a gift, that failure in, in these imperfections are, are the only way you develop a talent in doing anything. It's the only way you learn. Uh, you're mistaken. The biggest failure is the failure to try. And that's my sort of petition to you now. If you've watched this and you think, wow, it's pretty cool, Jeff. I could never do that. Well, if you're not gonna look in the Batson catalog, pick out some stuff, you will fail. You will never be able to do it. God, that is nice. That loaded good. It's light. It's lighter than what I was using. Man, and it's short. It's shorter. I've, I've gone from a, uh, was it like 7.4 to, and that was just a little wrist flick. I didn't even have to launch it. I mean, the combination of the hundo and this judge, I'm happy. Even though there are imperfections and all those tiny failures are gonna make me better as a rod builder. And I enjoy the process, so you ought to do it. Order the components, Batson makes it super easy. They lay everything out for you. They give you the rod spacing, the parts list, everything you need to uh, to build your own rain shadow custom. Thanks for watching. Now I got to go catch some smallmouth with this. They're not up there though. <laughs>